on the phone with my husband. He's two minutes away. All of a sudden, I hear a bang. I hear it through the phone, but I also hear it right outside on our street. I drop what I'm doing. I run outside. The first thing I see, the car is completely totaled. My husband's car just completely totaled. I get closer to the car. I look inside. He's gone. He's not. He's dead. I start freaking out. I don't know what I'm doing. You know, he was the breadwinner of our family. Like I, I didn't have to work when I was with him. He supported it. He, I was always taking care of our two kids. Were I start reeling? I wait for the police to get there. They tell me they're going to take the body to the morgue. That's fine. I decide to take whatever was in his car. There's a phone. There's some sunglasses. Some other things. I grab all of that stuff. Whatever I could. I go back inside. I start making the phone calls. I'm calling the funeral directors. Finally, I get on the phone with the one where the body is. And he tells me that some other woman came and picked up my husband's body, and he says it was his wife. And I'm like, "What are you talking about? I'm his wife. I'm sitting here with two kids. I'm sitting here with, with all, with. I don't even know what to do next." So I run down to where it's supposed to be. The funeral director there tells me, "No, here's the address of where it was taken. That's where the body is. It's there now." I rush over there. I'm furious. I'm, I'm so angry at, that I have to go through this on top of losing my husband. It's just crazy. So I walk in. Immediately, I see a black woman crying, sobbing over my husband, my dead husband that I just found in a totaled car. I'm angry. I didn't even know I was. I'm so angry. I'm like, I rush up to her. I'm like, What are you doing? Why would you take my husband's body? I do not know what I'm going through, and she starts yelling back at me, and she's like, "What are you talking? About? I'm his wife, all of it." And I'm like, "No, you're not. I am." It's getting tense. We start just going back. It's finally, I'm like, "Look, I have pictures. I have memories. I have kids to prove it. I will show you." She said, "Show me then, because I do too." We take out our phones. There's wedding photos. I have wedding photos. She does. It's the same exact man. He's Scott to me, but he's David to her. He. And we just start questioning everything we thought we knew about him. We start thinking we're like, I'm like, do you have documents to prove his? There's nothing in documents that she has that says Scott, and there's nothing that I have that says David. It's like he was two different people, and we were left with so many questions. We start talking a little more. We realize that we don't really know what he did for work. He just traveled a lot. I never really questioned him. I didn't have to. You know, I trusted him, and she did too. Apparently, well, I knew his one. Office that I knew of was here, like in one spot, and she knew that it was in the other spot. So we decide to go together to both of those locations, and you know we explain the circumstances, and we get into those offices. There's nothing in either one of them. It's completely clean. Not even not even a desk or a chair. And we start questioning even more. We're like, well, how are we going to figure this out? We decide to go to the police. You know, we talk to them. We're like, we tell them what happened. How we're not sure who we're dealing with, or. We just want some answers. And they're like, we can open up an investigation. We can look into it. You know, we can autopsy the body. Maybe find some prints or something. And it all sounds great. So we do that, and then I go home, and I start I start looking for some more answers. And I remember that I sh I grab things from the car, so I start shifting through them, and then I see the phone that I got, and it's dead now. So I plug it in. I'm like, maybe it'll maybe it'll say something. As soon as that phone turned on. Messages in different languages. We're talking Japanese, Arabic, Portuguese. It was just wild because my husband and I over only ever spoke English. There was that he didn't know any other languages, or at least I thought Scott didn't know any other languages. And then while the phone's on, I get a call, and I'm like, okay, maybe this is someone who can give me an answer. I answer it, and on the other line is a woman speaking in Spanish to me. I all I know how to say is, oh, stop, stop. You know that's it. So I'm like, oh, okay. Let me let me find somebody who can speak Spanish. I run outside my house. Luckily, my neighbor's gardener was out there. He speaks Spanish. I'm like, look, can you please help me? I don't know Spanish. I need you to translate this for me. I just lost my husband. It's very important. And he he of course says yes. So he's translating for me. And it turns out that the woman on the phone, she lives in Colombia. Apparently, she's also his wife. And on top of that, she has three kids with him. It just—it got to a point where I was like, I'm not getting any answers on my own. So I decided to give the FBI a call because obviously the police weren't going to be able to help me. Because on top of everything, I get another call from a funeral director saying somebody took his body now. So on top of that, but this time he can't tell—he doesn't know where it is. He doesn't know who took the body. It's not another wife. It's just gone. So I call the FBI and I'm like, Look, I tell them everything that happens, one on top of the other. I'm like, I have this phone. It's getting messages. It's getting so many messages in different languages. 
I don't know what to do. I just want help finding out answers. And the FBI's like, okay, here's what we're going to do. We're going to come tomorrow. We'll pick up the phone. We'll open our own investigation. We'll look into it. Thinking finally someone's going to, It's a. it'll be nice knowing at least something. You know, who was, who was he? Was he Scott? Was he David? Was he someone else? So I put the phone down. I'm, I leave it there. I go to sleep for that night. It has to be about 12.40 a.m. The doorbell rings. And I'm thinking, I know they said tomorrow morning, but... I just, I wasn't really thinking at all, I guess. I get up, and I just want to make, maybe it's the FBI. As soon as I open the door, there's a gun in my face. And I couldn't see past the gun, but I know there were two men there. And the one's like, where's the phone? I tell them exactly where it is. I'm like, it's upstairs on the nightstand, in the drawer. Go get it. I, go get it. And they're like, good. And while the other guy goes and gets the phone, the one with the gun in my face says, whatever you want to know, whatever you think you knew, whatever you are looking for, just stop. Otherwise, we're going to come back, and this will be the last thing you say. Of course, I say that's not a problem. I don't need any more answers. Whoever Scott was, he's just Scott, and he's gone now to me. So I'm reeling. I calm myself down. I go back to sleep. The next day, the real FBI shows up, and they're like, oh, where's the phone? I tell them what happens. I said there was two people here, the gun. I don't even remember what they looked like. I couldn't see past the gun because I could only think about what will my two kids do if I'm not here anymore. And they're like, look, all we can really tell you then is that we think your husband was El Porco, which was an international foreign agent and a mercenary. And that's all they could tell me. And they said, you're going to want to stop looking for answers now, especially if they came to your house. They know where you live. They know where your kids live. And I said, that's fine. I'll leave it to you guys. With the stress of it, I, you know, me and Jill, his second wife, ended up bonding over it. We decided to go to church together, and that really saved us. Forming that relationship with her and going to church, like, it was really helpful. And now we're just one big extended family. We're just support systems for each other, trying to raise each other's families the best we can.